Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, and uh, welcome to this Thursday in, uh, after the third Sunday in, in Lent. Uh, we'll look back a little bit at uh, the gospel reading from this past weekend and uh, reflect a little bit on what it is to be a fig tree. Um, and uh, thank you to all who are gathered online as well, and Sarah for managing that community uh, for us. Um, we're in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, we'll continue on page uh, 69 of the Little Red Book, if you've got one handy, uh, or the uh, order of service I've, I've emailed out lots and lots of times. So there we'll find our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. We beseech thee, almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The lesson is taken from the 10th chapter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. 
for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So, if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is a selection from Psalm 63. O oh God. You are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I invite you to rise as you're able for a reading from the Gospel. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Shalom fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord 
our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Uh, please be seated. So I like casting characters um, in parables. It's just good fun and a good way to, I don't know, try and glean something um, out of them. Um, so this week, I feel like a fig tree. <laughs> if I'm casting myself in the, um, in the uh, you know, um, in the parable. Um, and that, that feels like, you know, spinning my wheels occasionally and, and just sort of casting about, if, see if you see yourself in any of these, uh, these examples, but sometimes I feel like I'm spinning my wheels or I'm just not doing the thing that, you know, you open the book and you read the, the prayers that were said at, uh, at my ordination. And some of those things just aren't happening this week. Um, or if you open your job description book and, and you look at your job description and you've done all of the other duties as a sign from time to time, but none of the actual core duties of your, of your role. Um, so this week, um, I feel like an unfruitful fig tree sometimes um, if I'm um, being uncharitable with myself, which often I am, um, and maybe you see yourself in that too. Are you your own harshest critic? Um, um, and so um, I feel like maybe I'm in need of some of that scratching around the bottom and some uh, manure or you know fertilizer that might feed me um, if I, I'm not sure that it's manure in my case, but some sort of fertilizer or food in my life. Um, and uh, what else did the gardener offer to do? Probably some pruning too. Uh, that might be from a different parable, but but some pruning in my life might be profitable too. Um, and so I've been sort of thinking, what does that pruning look like? What does that fertilizer look like? What does that care and tending look like in the context of this parable? And for the most part, it's all of you. <laughs> Um, because your presence in my life, and I hope my presence in your life, feeds me. Um, it gives me, sometimes it gives me lots of the other duties as a side, but it also gives me um, community and nurture and thoughtful discussion and um, opportunities to come to the table together, opportunities to celebrate together, opportunities to commiserate together to mourn the past several years of other duties as assigned from time to time by those of competent authority. Um, and so my thanks to you, the gardeners of my life um, in this moment uh, for the food and the care and the tending and the occasional pruning uh, that you all um, offer to me and that I hope in your life, I offer some of that to you. And I'm hoping that the gardener will come back next year, that you'll all come back next year and say, oh, give it another year. <laughs> um, because in that pushing off the deadline, I see some good news that, that there is another chance. And from elsewhere in scripture, a 70 times 77th chance. I'm hoping that I get to 77 years. I don't, I don't foresee myself going much past that, given the, you know, the number of cigarettes I smoke and, and all of that sort of thing that, that I don't see myself past 77, but I'm hoping I'll get another year past 77 if I make it there too. The good news is in the pushing off of the, the judgment of of whoever that man who happened to own the, the fig tree. I didn't cast that person in my telling of the story to myself. So um, the pushing off of whatever the consequences of the owner of the, the tree um, is, in there, there is good news for me. I hear good news um, and that I get another chance and that we get to tend each other for 70 times 77 to conflate all of the, the scripture into to one place. So 
I pray not for ever reaching the, oh, and you could just cut it down phase. I hope for the 70 times 77 chances to, to get this pruning and tending and fruitfulness right. Um, there are fruits, though, in our life together. Um, so it is not, um, we're not barren, uh, but we can always be more fruitful and more, you know, glorious and more flowering and more, you know, um, fruitful. Um, but we all need each other to tend and feed and all of that. So keep up the good work. You're doing good work to me. You're feeding me, you're pruning me, you're tending me. Um, and my prayer is that, that I offer the same to you in some small measure. And if not, we get another chance. We get another chance in our relationship with each other. And we'll check in again next year. Amen. We're continuing on page 71 of your prayer book. I invite you to rise as you are able, and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I beseech you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. 
All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Let us pray. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth. You, O oh Lord, know we need it. In the Ukraine, or in Ukraine, in South Sudan, in Yemen, and all those places wanting for peace. And for the unity of all people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brothers and sisters who have departed this life and are at rest. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Todd, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired, naming them aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. For Sam Bridgen, for all those whom we have forgotten and have asked for our prayers, do thou, O Lord, remember. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Do we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Either do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Continuing on page 77 of your prayer book, let us together confess. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, 
We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy hath promised forgiveness of them with hearty repentance and faith. And unto him have mercy, pardon, and deliver us. And strengthen you in all goodness, bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Hear now what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy son, our savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks be to God.
Continuing on page 84 of your prayer book. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. A couple of announcements before we uh, conclude. Um, if you haven't yet heard from Ruth and you're interested in um, memorial flowers on the altar for uh, Easter, please do uh, let me know and I, I'll, I'll connect you to. But um, if, uh, if you would like to do that and uh, have somebody in mind to memorialize, please do uh, let us know. Um, without any obligation, of course, don't, don't feel like you're obliged to. Um, and uh, Sunday morning worship at 10 and 8 a.m. Uh, you're always welcome to join us for that. And anything else that needs announcing? Hmm? Masks? We have to wear them still, sorry. <laughs> um, our bishop is being more cautious, which uh, has served us well thus far. So, uh, uh, so we're maintaining masking, and um, uh, because we have so much space, we're sustaining the distancing and um, um, other things. We can be a, a little looser about it, but we're we're electing to leave the pews marked for distancing and that sort of thing. Um, but the masks are the bishop's requirement. Um, yes, my Lord, how high. <laughs> um, uh, at this point, Bev, please bless us on our way. Standing as you are able. Amen.
Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks for praying along as, as usual. You. Take care, Marlene. Bye, Bye Marlene. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, -bye. Gerard, if you're talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. You too.